Something in TF2 you probably never thought too hard about before, the Dr. Gordbort weapons are the ray guns that are styled to be retro-futuristic. Stuff like the Pomsen, the Man Melter, the Cow Mangler, the Bison, basically anything that has unlimited ammo and deals 20% damage to buildings are all weapons under the Dr. Gordbort umbrella. Now come to find out, a lot of people assume that TF2 invented these weapons, but these are actually in-game remakes of cool prop weapons you can buy in real life. If you have a spare hundred bucks laying around, you can hold a real Righteous Bison in your hand, how cool is that? There are currently seven Gordbort weapons in TF2, the Righteous Bison, the Man Melter, and the Pomsen. Thompson 6000 are direct recreations of their real-life counterparts, pretty much poured into the game as is. The Cow Mangler 5000 and the Phlogistonator are modified versions of existing weapons, those being the Pierce 75 and the Unnatural Selector respectively, which have really cool original models, mind you. And then there's the third degree in the Eureka effect, which because the Gordbort store doesn't make melee weapons actually are TF2 originals, come to find out. But these aren't the only weapons that were produced in the Dr. Gordbort line of weapons. There are six more interesting looking ones that could easily be implemented in the TF2, but for whatever reason never were, and after looking them over, I came up with some interesting stats they might have. Have. So let's take a look at what we got. First of all is the Saboteur 66, which prides itself on being an ultra wave equalizer, whatever that means. Yeah, these cool sounding but meaningless weapon descriptions are gonna be a trend, by the way. Well, the name for this one might make you think it should be a spy revolver. There's another weapon that actually is a laser revolver, so for the sake of spreading out the weapon slots, I say we give this one to Scout. One of the most common reasons Scouts switch to their pistols is as a last resort when they run out of scattergun ammo, so I thought it would be interesting to have a Scout pistol that tries to capitalize on that. These would be the stats for the Saboteur 66. The main gimmick of the weapon would be to reload your primary ammo every time you land a shot, meaning that you can attack enemies and reload your scatter gun at the same time. However, since it also reloads your secondary ammo on hit, you could theoretically have a bottomless clip if you never missed a shot. In exchange, you'd only have a six shot clip, mainly because that's how much ammo the scatter gun has, and you'd have to aim projectiles instead of hit scan bullets, meaning that continuously landing your shots is an actual challenge. Ideally, the projectile speed would be closer to the flare gun than the Pomsen, because the Pomsen's projectile speeds also need to be buffed for it to be usable, and I really don't want more gimmick weapons in this godforsaken game. Oh, and the Saboteur would also have an infinite ammo reserve and 80% less damage to buildings because that's a requirement for this kind of weapon, I guess. Overall, this would be a super cool niche for a scout pistol to fill, and I think that forcing people to aim projectiles on a normally hit scan weapon is a big enough downside to properly balance it out. Speaking of laser revolvers, the victorious mongoose looks exactly like something Spy would carry around. It also sounds like a great name for a scout pistol, which I guess is how it goes sometimes. The victorious mongoose is classified as a concealable ray pistol, so since this supposedly shoots rays instead of lasers that are slower than bullets for some reason, I figured that these weapons should break the Pomsen formula and do their own thing instead. Here are my proposed stats for the victorious mongoose. Every 1.25 seconds, this would have the ability to fire a perfectly accurate beam that does 60 damage at any range in exchange for a portion of Spy's cloak meter. The beam would penetrate enemies and mark them for death for three seconds, but in exchange for such a powerful blast, Spy would suffer recoil and can't shoot, cloak, or switch weapons until the next shot is ready. Since Spy is a support class after all, I thought a more support-based revolver that weakens enemies from any range would be an interesting niche to look into for a new weapon. I could definitely see a lack of damage fall off being a bit too powerful on the mongoose goose, as seen by the old ambassador getting nerfs. I'm not opposed to modifying a bit if it sounds too crazy, but a support weapon that Spy can shoot from a relatively safe distance would be a great addition to an otherwise weak class. Engineer already has access to a Gordbort set with the Pomsen and the Eureka effect, but for some reason this set doesn't include a secondary, even though Engineer is, uh, struggling in that department. Luckily, our problems can be answered through the Goliathon 83, an infinity beam projector, which also has tubes of liquid on it for some reason. Honestly, the classifications of these weapons are so overdramatic, I'm starting to love them. As for the Goliathon 83's potential, stats, well, we're gonna get a little bit wacky for this one. Since there are two tubes of liquid on the back, as I mentioned earlier, I thought it would be interesting if this gun had two separate firing modes that you could toggle by right-clicking. The first one would inflict afterburn with variable duration based on how much damage the shot did, and the second one would inflict knockback with similar scaling. Like the victorious mongoose, this would fire a perfectly accurate beam, but unlike that one, the goliathon would actually be affected by ramp up and fall off so engineers can't just sit behind their sentry and spam it all day. It would also have a charge mechanic where you can hold fire for up to a second and a half to get the max damage. That you can decide between single high damage shots and close range spam if you're panicking and trying to get someone off you. I'm not going to lie, as fun as this sounds, I'd imagine this would be broken as hell, so comment how you'd balance this sucker and I'll make sure to give it a look. Moving on the demo man of all classes, there's a very interesting looking Gordbort weapon called the Fourth Law that I could easily see being modified into some sort of grenade launcher. The Fourth Law is a matter, mangler, and disentangler beam, which... What? I have no idea what that means, and it sounds kind of dumb, so it's gonna be a grenade launcher. Now, being a plasma grenade launcher certainly has its challenges, most notably how plasma can't really bounce and roll, and how the standard reduced damage to building stat could completely kill a grenade launcher. However, I think I've come up with some interesting stats for this kind of weapon. This would basically be the cow mangler for Demo Man, but instead of having a charge shot that does a lot of damage and disabling buildings, you have grenades that explode upon hitting a surface with an increased explosion radius to boot. Combined with infinite ammo and perhaps a bit of afterburn, this would basically be a halfway between the grenade launcher and sticky spamming 
aiming, allowing you to aim at people's feet instead of forcing you to directly hit pipes. The downside to this is that you can't do full crits, you can't fire it that often, and you literally cannot use this thing to deal with engineer buildings like at all. My other idea for this involved two separate firing modes like the engineer pistol, but then I realized that Demo Man can't have anything that requires right click to activate because of shields and sticky bomb launchers, so this is what we're getting. I think that while this one would be fun, it definitely takes some liberties in defining Demo Man's role in the game, but the concept of an explode on impact grenade launcher would be super helpful to allow hybrid knights to have some advanced mobility. If this ends up being too similar to the scorch shot, we could also remove the afterburn and give it a different secondary effect instead. I'll be real with you, I don't really have many good ideas for this one, so if you can think of better stats, please let me know. And finally, we get to the last two laser weapons, which I'll give to Heavy because he somehow doesn't have any yet. The Goliathon 800, which, yes, is a different weapon than the Goliathon 83 for some dumb reason, is a massive hunk of tech that's classified as a moon hater death ray, which, holy god. With some minor modifications, I could easily see this becoming a minigun, so that's the route that I'm going to take with it. Here are my stats for the Goliathon 800. The positives would be that you have infinite ammo, the ability to pierce enemies, and every hit that you land increasing your secondary meter by 5%, making this combo super well with food items. The downside is that this thing only fires projectiles, meaning that you have to lead your shots pretty significantly in order to rack up any kind of mid-range damage, as well as an overheating function to prevent heavies from just spamming this down a hallway forever. Basically, after 10 seconds of continuous firing, your firing speed would get cut in half until you take a one-second break, no need to even unrev. The other stats, including a handful of hidden ones that we'd have to figure out, are basically just to make the fact that this fires projectiles instead of bullets actually work as intended. Now, I'll be honest with you, I think the weapons like the syringe gun that require you to lead your tracking a bit are actually great. The problem with the current ones is that their projectile speed is way too low. If syringes moved at the same speed as flares or even just rescue ranger bolts, I think a lot more people would actually like using this type of weapon. That being said, a heavy minigun that has infinite ammo and pierce could definitely turn out too spammy depending on how we tweak the numbers, so even if we didn't want to keep the overheating mechanic as it's listed, we definitely need to add something to keep it in check. And to go with the minigun, Heavy could also get the FMOM as a shotgun alternative. FMOM stands for something that's apparently completely irrelevant because it's not even on the official website, so I'm henceforth deeming it to stand for the funny momentinator of Moscow, because running this on Fat Scout would definitely be a funny moment. Since laser weapons that focus solely on damage are usually pretty trash, I figured that implementing a support function into this one would fit Heavy's playstyle pretty well and actually give the sandwich some competition. Every time you hit an enemy with the FMOM's projectile, you fill up a portion of your targeting meter. The more full your targeting meter is, the more accuracy your primary will have, all the way up to a 60% increase. However, each primary ammo expended consumes 2% of the targeting meter, meaning that the more you WM1 with your minigun, the faster your accuracy drains. This would allow you to engage weaker enemies or spam down corridors with the FMOM to farm targeting, then have an extremely powerful minigun laser beam to win your next 1v1 with. I honestly have no idea if 4 FMOM hits for 50 accurate primary shots is a good exchange rate or not, but the idea of having a secondary that increases your primary accuracy just sounds super cool. Oh, and just to make the weapon set actually work well together, if you pair this with the Goliathon 800, your targeting would basically never drain since the Goliathon fills your secondary meter, making it nearly perfectly accurate all the time. The Goliathon is already pretty accurate to boot though, so if that's too lame, we could also make targeting increase its projectile speed, but that might tip the scales the other way, so I don't know. Anyway, those are all the Gordbort weapons that had physical versions made and distributed, minus the Death Ray, which technically only had a figurine, but it still counts. But there are almost 20 more that exist as concept art in some of the various Dr. Gordbort booklets. Obviously, I'm not going to make every single one of those into a TF2 weapon because I'd be here all year making this video, but it's surprising how many different ray guns this company has conceptualized, and a lot of these are super cool looking. Oh, also, I found that the Pomsen canonically comes in different colors, so Valve not letting us paint this in game is something that I'm mad about now. And that's not to mention the canonical repaints of various weapons that have been produced, which also removes any excuse Valve can give of the Gordbort weapons not having any war paints. So yeah, those are my laser gun ideas, obviously not meant to be super balanced, but hopefully cool concepts nonetheless. Once again, if you have any balance suggestions or new stat ideas for some of these, put them in a comment. Believe it or not, I actually do read through a lot of them, and I always like reading your stat ideas, even if they're uh, a little bit wacky sometimes. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like. If you hated this video, make sure your feedback is in 12 point times new Roman double spaced, and most importantly, have a good one. Hey, Great Blue here. Uh, I have a quick announcement to make because I don't have my normal outro file. I have no idea where it went, so I might have to remake it. Anyway, uh, I wanted to very quickly mention that I have a Patreon and that I'm actually planning on, like, regularly using it now. I try not to do sponsorships with this channel because I know people don't like advertisements. It's understandable, right? You have to watch them on YouTube anyway, but uh, the link's in the description. If you wanted to, at the very least, check it out. There's some pretty cool stuff in there, so uh, if you want to contribute to helping the channel, Channel not be advertised well it would be very much appreciated and you're a cool guy so yeah that's it uh hopefully my outro will be back next time